Hi everybody. I've left it a little late. We're closing up on Halloween and I haven't done the Christmas cake. So, I'm doing a double. <laughs> um, whoops, I forgot my... I need to stir this. Let's see. Maybe that one. Um, <laughs> I'm a little organized and a little unorganized. So, the, ra the raisins are soaking in brandy. And I used, I used, now I didn't want to get like expensive brandy, but I wanted something with some flavor, so I got uh, peach snaps. It tastes okay, I did try, you know, just a tiny little bit, <laughs> honest. <laughs> okay, so the raisins are soaking in uh, brandy. It's supposed to soak them overnight. I might have cheated a little on that, <laughs> but it's all going in. So, um, I am doubling the recipe, but in the description, I will put the recipe just for one. And I will put everything. Over the years, I've been doing this recipe quite a few years, and it used to have different types. It had currants, and then we found little sticks in the currants, and they weren't very nice so I quit the currants and they had two kinds of raisins and we settled for just one type California <laughs> raisins and uh, but I'll leave the recipe as it was originally and I haven't added anything I've just taken off some things and the dried cranberries, some people found them a little dry. <laughs> so they've been taken out. And I did put apricots in, um, cut into pieces. And we've just decided to go with raisins. Now, I put uh, the single recipe is 450 grams, and I doubled that for the raisins. So, um... I didn't add anything extra because of what I took off. I left everything the same. So we better um, see what we're supposed to do here. So uh, the first thing we're supposed to do is place all the dried fruit the night before in a bowl with the brandy and it all sort of gets absorbed. And uh, as long as the brandy's in there, <laughs> that's the important part. It does, it gives it a nice flavor. So um, the oven is preheating to 275. So the first thing we want to do is sift the dry ingredients together. So the first of the dry, now this is also gluten free, this recipe. Um, it's still good, you can change any flour you want with another flour, but so um, almond flour is the first one, which is very good for you. It's ground almonds. And I have 200 grams of um, almond flour. That's double the recipe. I just wanted to make sure. <laughs> I've doubled it before, but we, you know, when you're talking and, you know. So anyway, there's 200 grams of almond flour. And uh, we better get another little stir spoon. Okay, I like this one. This, this is a, I, I was way out in the bee far, a couple hours drive, no, an hour's drive, not that. And, but way out along the creek out there. And this, this uh, older couple, they, uh, he makes these things and he gave me one. And uh, it's great. So it's just a wooden spoon, but it's, it's the shape of it. And I will always remember when I use it. So we've got uh, almond flour, 100 grams, except I doubled it. So then we have 100 grams of buckwheat flour. Now we have a local over by where I got this fowl that grows buckwheat flour now and it's beautiful and it's the light buckwheat so and everything is already sifted and very nice and fine 
So put that there and we'll stir that in. So now we have the almond flour, the buckwheat flour. Now there's 25 grams of millet flour. If you don't have any, use something else. So double that's only 50 grams. So that goes in. It's an old recipe and you know what? We like it. We eat it till June. I usually make like four. <laughs> but I am behind this year. And uh, oh well. <laughs> and you know I made um, oh I made a homemade vanilla and it's down getting ready and I'd be using it on some Christmas baking yet. Not today. So um, now we have the almond flour, the light buckwheat flour, the millet flour. Now we need a half a teaspoon of salt, but uh, I use one teaspoon of salt. I keep my salt in this uh, coffee thing. You can pour a whole bunch in, it's quick to use. And so, like, um, I really don't use a measurement uh, thing because I always go, that's a teaspoon. And it's the coffee thing. And it's always handy when you're cooking. And that's not too much salt. My goodness, do you guys read on the labels? You should be reading all the labels. <laughs> if you can't pronounce it, don't eat it. But anyway, the salt they put in some things. Holy smokes. I like salt. I like pepper. But uh, not a quarter of what, you know, like not poured on. So we got our salt. Now we want uh, nutmeg. One of these. Yeah, that's the nutmeg. So we want a half a teaspoon of nutmeg, but I'm putting in a teaspoon because I love spice. So we can get this. So, okay. So I'm putting one heaping teaspoon for, oh, this is double. Right? Right? So I wrote down here that I use one teaspoon, so that's actually two teaspoons. We like spice. <laughs> that's two teaspoons of nutmeg that in the right place so that I might mix it up. And um, the other one is allspice and we're using two teaspoons of allspice. Yeah, we've got less, less candy fruit or spice. <laughs> if these turn out, we'll be happy. No, they'll turn out fine. It's such an easy recipe, you guys. Anybody can do it. And, and then it goes we have these round tins and we wrap it in cheesecloth and brandy and, and, and in uh, that paper for the oven. What's that called? And you know what that's called. So we, uh, parchment paper. And we wrap them all up. You can use wax paper too, whatever you have. And there it stays till when you're ready. <laughs> then at coffee time, you just take a little piece each time. Last delicious. Okay, now we want for one recipe 175 grams of demerara sugar or coconut sugar, whatever you choose to use. So this is 350 grams. That goes in. So I usually stir it. I don't keep using the mix master until I get down to the real business. <laughs> This morning, I was out in the back 40, our back hill by the park, cleaning up everything because twice a year we get our compost, like garden stuff picked up. Uh, they only do, some bigger cities will take it more often, but here we only get it picked up twice a year or you have to take it in your vehicle. And uh, so I was doing some final clean up and it looks nice back there now. So I did that this morning. Jack was out fixing the gate, and so and now I'm doing this. You know, gotta keep enjoying things. <laughs> so uh, okay, we've got the almond flour, 
we've got the buckwheat flour, we've got the millet flour, we've got the salt, the nutmeg, the allspice, and the sugar in here now. So on the back, I'll make sure I put this there if you want to make this. It's like guaranteed. I haven't had it flop. <laughs> Not yet anyway. So um, preheat the oven. Sift the dry ingredients together. Now warm the butter in the molasses. And what I do is, I've already melted the butter in the molasses. And I used good butter because I used to milk a Jersey cow. She was my big baby. I kept her spotless. And, um, and her little babies when she had them. And so I really like good butter. <laughs> and this is not the same. Uh, we used to take the cream in and shake it in a gallon jar and get butter. I used to sell butter and eggs and all kinds of stuff. But anyway, <laughs> I, when I first moved here, I, I had a vegetable garden down in the creek in Salmon Arm, uh, Canoe Creek. And uh, I grew all these vegetables and I, I sold all fresh vegetables in the spring. Lots of work growing vegetables, you guys. You have to appreciate what you get to eat because there's a lot of work involved in getting it to you. So that's why I still have a garden because um, I know they do things before you get it. <laughs> Check it out. <laughs> you know, they got to extend that shelf life. Um, so anyway, um, I like good butter. So I did put a little coconut oil in also and it's melted and it's been with the molasses. So because it's warm, I always add it next and beat it in before I put the eggs. Because we don't want the eggs to cook and the flour will help cool everything down. So um, we have... Uh, two tablespoons of molasses, one for a single recipe. And for a single recipe, 225 grams of butter. But I've got um, double that. And I'll, I'll double one more recipe one day, and then, then we'll have plenty. So we'll just stir that in a bit, and then I'll have to put the mixer on for a minute, because the next thing is eggs, and this recipe calls for um, four large eggs. But I have eight, <clears throat> and we go get farm eggs. I Don't be surprised if one day I have chickens in my backyard. I don't care how old I am. I had chickens, I sold eggs, I sold milk, I sold butter, I sold vegetables, <laughs> and... Uh, you get spoiled. So I really, I mean, I don't want to milk cow again. She's very hard work. She was a Jersey. She was very hard work. And I milked the cow too long, like out in the winter, never had a barn and, and cold and not good for your hands. So I suffer with my fingers. I, I like, I guess I blame that. I don't know what it is for sure, but she had tiny little teats and you had a strip milker. And I didn't know how to milk. My neighbor, Henry, he taught me how to milk. And Rosemary and I, we shared off. <laughs> yeah. It's a good experience. People need to know where things come from. I remember the grandkids, they came, and, and they just have no idea, you know? <laughs> anyway, um, there we are. So... It says, warm the butter and the molasses, beat the eggs good, and while beating slowly, uh, the, you add the warm butter and the molasses. So, we're, gee, we're almost finished. You know, this is such a quick recipe. So I have to go over here, and I have the eggs right here, and we're going to beat them in. First, I'll give them a little beat in the little bowl they're in. I'm not a real cooking instructor, so you have to bear with me. <laughs> okay. Lucky I'm not doing garlic toast because I'm telling you, 
I'm the queen of burning garlic toast. <laughs> because it's something you put on, company's coming, you want it to be really nice. You put it on last, but you're so busy doing other things, you know what happens. Well, what happens is it gets forgotten and burned. Oh, from once we had um, a fondue party and on the coast, because there's lots of sea, we use a fondue lot, and I like fondue. And uh, <laughs> there was a bunch of people here, and one of the neighbors, there was nurses, there was firemen, there was policemen, you name it, right? So over here I got the fondue going, and we ended up with a big fire coming up, 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 you know? Don't wait for someone else to put the fire out. <laughs> so anyway, I grabbed something and suffocated it. And, and after that, I haven't had too many fondues. <laughs> or sticks and something electric, not with the little fires. You got little fires, you got oils, you got... But anyway, nobody got injured. And the firemen weren't called, but they were watching me. They figured I did it, I should clean it up, so. Huh. Oh dear. It was fun though. Yeah, sometimes you know, you don't think your reactions are quick, but sometimes you just got to do something. There. Now this is nice and runny. So, okay, we're getting there. So we folded the butter, the molasses, all that in. Now we're going to add the fruit. And then we're going to spread it in the pans. And that's just how easy this is. And like I say, the recipe will be there. Now we found we just like raisins. And the yellow raisins are good too. So use whatever ones you want. Uh, so here we go. Wow. Mm. Mm. <laughs> mm. I know, I know you're not supposed to do that. Mm. Oh, but this is so good. It's just, we found we just like raisins, but uh, you have to stir it really good to make sure all that brandy's worked in. And then it, and then, so, so here we are. Um, fold in the soaked fruit. Oh yeah, there's one other thing. Uh, one lemon and some orange zest. And I don't have any orange zest because we usually have our own oranges and lemons, but this year we're lucky to have the tree. So I'm just going to put in about the juice from one lemon. That's enough. Because we've got extra liquid. We've got extra liquid in there. <laughs> Hey, do you guys know who Bruno Gerussi is? Because he's the only movie star I ever met in person. And living on the northern tip of Vancouver Island when I first got married, um, in Holbert, like that is the end of the world. It is like all gravel road from Campbell River. It's all logging road to get up there in those days and it's a, a logging camp that is not far from an Air Force base, a small one. And the loggers and Air Force guys, they always used to fight and <laughs> they let us shop up there sometimes because otherwise we had to get all our groceries in on the barge. In winter time you're lucky if you got the barge but uh, um, I didn't really like living in that uh, logging camp trailer court very much because I'm a little old fashioned and things were going on. And uh, so we bought 40 acres out Kate Scott. Now check that out. It was the old Anderson farm, very old, old house that we fixed up. And, and uh, I was not a hippie, but I had a hippie brain. I wanted to be self-sufficient in those days and grow everything. <laughs> oh dear. All right, all right. Lucky you're not here. I'd be talking your ear off. Okay, and I am, aren't I? So anyway, um, 
We got everything in there. So um, we remembered the lemon at the last minute. So um, line your tin. You can use an angel food pan. I do sometimes, but this time I don't. Our spring cake pans. And um, I have a parchment paper on the bottom of them. And um, that's it. I don't put any extra anything. So we're going to, uh, it says, um, line the tin, angel food, or spring cake pan. And uh, spread the mixture in the pan, smooth the top. And it says put a little bit of parchment paper over the top because it's in the oven for four hours at 275. And at four hours it will be done perfect. And when you touch it, it will be springy, but the instructions are all here. So, um, to make sure this all goes right, <laughs> okay, I have one bigger pan, and I have some parchment paper in the bottom. And the good thing about these is you can go around them with a knife, so it doesn't really matter. Um, I don't have to oil it. I could, but I don't have to. And then you just take this off the side, and the same with this one. So it is kind of nice. So what I'm going to do, because the raisins tend to settle, is make sure, maybe I should put the mixer on this for a minute, just before we pour it in. Now I want a big spoon because I don't want a big mess and I want to make sure I get lots of ingredients in there. So I have parchment paper in the bottom of both of these and I need a big soup spoon and this is clean because I make soup probably. Well, I try to make soup once a week. Mom loves soup so let's put, it's good when you have these old bowls because they have that little lip and you can so, this way I can put a scoop here and a scoop here, and I'm not, your food always wants to settle. So, this way. And then when this is all cooked, I'll get a picture of it when it comes out the oven, and that'll be, oh, after supper. After supper, I'll take a little picture for you. So, I mean, once you get to the end, you can stir, but when you're doing double, if you're doing single, you know it all goes in one, but I don't want one to have a whole bunch of uh, raisins in one knot. So, and then because it's in so oven, it's so long in the oven, you put a little piece of parchment paper over the top. I should reread this to make sure I didn't forget everything. Um, uh, raisins, brandy, flour, or almond flour, buckwheat flour, salt, nutmeg, allspice, the sugar, the eggs, the molasses, the butter. Yeah, we're good, we're good, we're good. It'll all rise because of those eggs, but I wanted to make sure. So, another one in the big one, next one in the small one, then I'll just pour it. Then I got this mess to clean up, unless you guys want to come to help me. Ooh, oh, lots of licking stuff. It is good. I know, it's raw eggs. Anyway, I've loved, lived in the sticks, and when I moved to Salmon Arm, which is a very country place, it was like the big city to me. So, huh, just what you get used to. I can't imagine a big city anymore. Um, even though I grew up near Burnaby, near Vancouver, in Burnaby. Okay. So you guys, I'm going to put this in the oven, and I will get a picture when it comes out, even if it flopped. I always, I'm honest. It pays to be honest. Mmm. 
Oh. I'm telling you. Mm. It is so delicious. Okay, let me just wipe my hands so I don't get something all over that. Okay, I'm going to put it in the oven. And uh, the oven's all set. You go there. You go there. Put it way into the back. So then um, I'm going to clean up and I may snack a little bit. I've been known to. And um, I'll get back to you. Just a quick add on. And we'll see what happens before I actually get the video up. <laughs> Thanks for joining me. <laughs> Don't forget to make yours. It's worth it. Bye for now. Okay, it's just about 6 o'clock p.m. and I just took them out. They're cooling. I, um, when it, the, when it started to cook in the oven and it was firm enough, that's when I put uh, parchment paper on the top so it wouldn't burn because it's in the oven a long time and everything looks fine they're nice big ones and they will get wrapped with brandy soaked cheeks cloth and uh, wax paper or parchment paper and put in a tin can till they're ready to eat and enjoy bye for now